Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Justin here from justincharnel.com. Somebody asked me, should you buy an email list? And the answer to that is a resounding no, across the board, especially not B2C, no to B2B, and no to B2G. And here's why. Uh, first of all, B2C, you shouldn't be doing any kind of cold outreach for B2C. Uh, you're going to be reaching out to, you know, at Gmail accounts, at Yahoo, at MSN, at, you know, local ISP email accounts. You're going to get put on a spam list super fast. You're going to get blacklisted and you're going to just completely kill your domain if you try to cold email to uh, personal email accounts. So don't buy a list to, to jumpstart your e-commerce store or anything like that. B2B. If you, you know, you see those deals, you get those emails all the time. Hey, we got 10,000 contacts for 50 bucks. And if you try to, if you buy one of those lists and you actually start, you know, emailing them, you're going to find generally about one to three things happening. There's going to be, they're either, the majority are going to be dead email accounts, as in they were active at one point. The email, you know, got out into the world and it's so inundated with just outreach, outreach, outreach that the user was just like, you know what? I need a new email address. This is a, this is getting ridiculous. You're going to have that going on. You're going to have <clears throat> fake email accounts that were created just based off like the naming convention of a business. You know, if they're using first dot last or first initial, middle initial, last name. Uh, last name, whatever, whatever their naming convention is for all their emails. They're just kind of plugging in like, okay, well, Jane, Jane Doe works there. Let's, you know, I know they use first dot last. So Jane Doe at URL.com or domain name.com. You're going to have just a whole bunch of, you know, bad emails in that list. They're, they're fatigued. You got bad emails. And third, it, it could be a honeypot. There are email addresses that if they get an email sent to them, um, you know, like I'm trying to a fake example, you know, if it's a Gmail account that is known to be, you know, shared amongst these lists, it, it might be a honeypot in which if you send an email to that account, that lets, you know, in this case, Google know that you are sending, you know, spam emails to bot lists and they're going to blacklist your uh, your domain name and you're not gonna be able to send emails out or you will but they're going to go straight to spam boxes or junk mail so those are kind of big big three reasons why you shouldn't buy b2b um, it's just not worth it overall they're, and even if even if they you know the email addresses are real there are actual people reading those emails you don't know what they do, what they want, what they're looking for. You know, even if you're just kind of trying to carpet bomb with some generic service, you know, SEO or digital marketing or whatever, you don't know what industry they're in. So you can't even like tailor the message to what, you know, would work for their business. Because doing SEO work for a local business is a whole lot different than doing SEO work for a, a international like uh, a national type brand or like an e-commerce store where they're, they're shipping nationwide as opposed to you know Joe's chiropractic so you don't know what they're even looking for uh, so you're you're spending money on a list that's probably tainted getting you, you don't know what kind of even service you can provide for those people that's not good overall now here's what you can do if you're in a B2B space and you want to kind of jumpstart that, the, the, that traffic, that initial, uh, get the word out, those initial offers and whatnot, by doing, like doing cold email, you can either sign up for a service to buy on like a one-to-one -one basis, an individual basis, uh, email addresses or contact information, phone numbers, whatever. Or you can hire somebody from like, you know, Pakistan or the Philippines or someplace that they'll do the prospecting for you. You can say, I want chiropractors in San Diego, you know, that are making this much money and they will, they will find those people and create that list for you. And you get an extra, 
extremely inexpensively, like 25 cents uh, around around a quarter for a contact. You know, you don't know if they're going to buy from you, but if you buy, you know, a thousand a thousand contacts for whatever, two hundred fifty dollars. All you gotta do is close one, and you'll have made money more money than whatever, and then. You can either keep contacting those same people or get more contacts or work with that client, depending on how much it is. So buying a list outright, hey, I got 10,000 contacts for 50 bucks. I got a million contacts. Like, don't ever do that. That's, that's, that's a terrible idea. You got to think about how many people also have access to that same deal. How many people have bought that list and already <laughs> hammered them with, with, with messages and and, and contact and outreach and saying, hey, 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 I want your attention. They're probably not, they're not going to want what you have. It doesn't matter how compelling your offer is. If you're just hitting them, hitting them, hitting them with the same generic thing that Joe's doing and Jane's doing and everybody else is doing, you're going to just, you're, you're, uh, you're a small droplet in a big ocean of bullshit. And you don't want to be that. You want to be the fire hose of success or something like that. Peace.